Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Zone Star State Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Ishmael Johnson. Ish, how are you doing? How are you feeling on this Tuesday afternoon? I'm good. One more day before I head out to San Antonio to, to go to girls, girls State. Uh, and figured we'd uh, just hit you with some hit you with some bracketology today because yeah. conference tournaments are starting, and so it's finally it's almost March. Uh, finally, starting to get to that time where we should start figuring out what teams got to do to get in. Yeah, February twenty eighth. We're recording this. It's almost March, the best month of the year. It's my birthday month. The b- basketball tournament. I mean, just what a great. Firstly, month it's March. your birthday month. Secondly, it's the basketball. That's, yeah, that's that's the first thing, obviously. Um. But yeah, we're going to get some bracketology. We have some women's basketball points we're going to talk about. I mean, Reagan Peebley stepping down at TCU. Baylor, Texas played um, uh, yesterday, or was that Sunday, uh, on the women's oh, side? Sunday. Yeah, on Sunday. So a few things to talk about. First, we have to um, get into the Sun Belt tournament because the Sun Belt decided that they were going to play their tournament a full week, basically, yeah. before anybody else. Mm-hmm. And or not anybody else, but any of the other, you know, serious turn um, conferences that mm-hmm. is. And so they're the only team that has a Texas team in it that is playing basketball this week as far as tournament goes. The rest of the team is still finishing out their conference season, all that good stuff. So we'll we'll real we'll real I think technically right now. I, I think <laughs> I think South Alabama and Georgia State are actually playing right now as a recording. So. It is like literally. They couldn't even wait on. to like the weekend. They're just no, they just it started like r- immediately. Like it is, yeah, it's halftime right now. Georgia State's up 20, 29, 21. So they yeah, just planted themselves in the middle not, of all. And by of the this. and by the way, this doesn't like the best part about this is like this doesn't mean that oh they get done earlier. No, they still go to Sunday. Like yeah. <laughs> they still go. The tournament goes to Sunday. It's not like oh the tournament's wrapped up and we're good and we get to you know we end on a on a. Friday or Saturday. No, they end on selection Sunday. So it's like, all right, whatever. (laughs) They in, I don't know. But anyways, so. Trust me, I covered this tournament for three years. It was was weird. (laughs) Yeah, I'm looking at it now. It's a long tournament. Okay. Uh, Well, the thing is, the thing is, we haven't talked about Texas State men in a long time. Uh, It's been kind of a rebuild type year for them. Um, you would know better than I uh, yeah. about this team. I mean, Mason Harrell was the only one really uh, to note that came back. I mean, Caleb Asbury, I watched him last night at Oklahoma State. You know, he's a key contributor for that team. Mm-hmm. So a lot of players, a lot of turnover. Um, they end the year 11th in the conference. They will be playing today at 730 against Georgia State. So we'll see uh, if they can get it done. Um, would – I mean, then they have Old Dominion. Old Dominion's pretty good. I mean, the yeah. Sun Belt as a conference on the men's side, I've been pretty impressed with. Uh, uh, top to bottom, I think Southern Miss obviously had a really good year. Marshall, gr- really good year. Louisiana, really good year. So those three, and then you know James Madison, Troy, Old Dominion as your uh, fourth through six. So um, anything, any fi- I guess any final thoughts on this Texas State season um, before we we move on, and you know maybe they win a game or maybe two games. Yeah, I mean, it, this was a weird season when it came to like, I don't want to say adjusting expectations, but when you come out, you know, and then Terrence Johnson's first two years and they win the Sun Belt regular season back to back, you kind of set your, and then Mason Harrell comes back. And so you kind of set yourselves up for that kind of uh, run again, or at least something like that run. And I think it just shows like one, that they did lose, they did end up losing way too much to to be able to kind of make up to be able to be that that caliber again. Uh, but also, I think the thing that's a little bit if I'm if I'm a Texas State fan, I don't want to say I'm concerned about because I still think Terrence Johnson's a great coach and he's going to be fine. But I'm really curious to see what this team looks like next year because this was a lot of players maybe not living up to what you kind of figured. Um, I think Mason Harrell's fine. I think, or obviously, really good. He's uh, leading them, and I think he's leading them in scoring. Still leading them in assists, even though he's down a little bit when it comes to assists. But I think that goes to show you the supporting cast isn't there. I think he's he's kicked up his scoring. I want to say he's it's his career high with 16 points a game. Yeah. Um, but this is a guy who was like the floor general last year, the past couple of years, and he's only up about to two assists right now. 
So he's scoring a lot more. He's not, nobody else is in double figures, right? Nigel Caesar, somebody who I think expected, we expected to kind of take a big leap. He's at 9.6 rebounds. The one that I think is probably the biggest disappointment, in my opinion, is Drew Drennan. Um, he was supposed to be probably that key off guard. And last year he played pretty well coming in. And this year he just has not played well at all. He averaged four points off the bench last year. He's only up to six, uh, six or seven points. And he's a more or less a starter, not a, a you know, six man type. Um, defensively, they've kind of lacked this year a lot. And then the past couple of years haven't been as good defensively as they historically were under Danny Casper, but they had that offense to be able to counterbalance that they took a lot of threes they made a lot of threes and that just has not happened this year their their pace is down of course of course they've been one of the slowest teams but they generated good shots they generate generated outside shots and those just aren't aren't happening this year so i would be i'm very curious to see how this team looks next year when you find somebody to replace mason harrell obviously you theoretically bring in some guys to on the inside maybe to help out nigel caesar because i don't think I don't think Nate Martin's necessarily that guy to to, to kind yeah. of um, to be there uh, on the inside, be that presence. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see kind of a, a big makeover for this roster next year. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think they make it out of, you know, maybe the second game if they win this first one. Yeah, Georgia State tonight. I don't know how bad Georgia State is. So, we'll get, I mean, get yeah, Georgia State's not great either. Um, uh, of course, you lose your, they, they lose um, uh, Lanier to, to SMU. Lanier. And yeah. so, yeah, they're not great either. So they, I would presume, let me see, I think Texas State beat them this year. Um, let's Georgia see. State's the 14 seed. I don't think they, they did not. Oh, they didn't, they didn't play them this year. So there you go. Um, <laughs> regardless, Georgia State's the last place team in the in the Sun Belt. So they probably win that game. But yeah, I don't see them getting very far for that. All right. Well, there's your uh, men's Sun Belt preview. Um, I will say it's crazy to see Marshall over here and Southern Miss after, you know, them being in Conference USA for so I know. So I, I don't think they saw yeah. him, but what a decade, pretty much. I know and Marshall. Then, Marshall and both those teams just came in and just like started slapping teams around. Yeah. <laughs> just walked in and started winning. And Marshall still has Tavion Kinsey, who was an amazing player. Was an amazing player. I mean, we thought he was going to be drafted in like 2020, and then he came back and he's still here. So, mm-hmm. uh, good well, for that's him. the thing. Like, that's kind of a an interesting because you know we talked about Mason Harrell coming back last year, this past year. NIL makes it like enticing for these guys, where it's like. You know, if you're Mason Harrell, you're not going to the NBA. You, you know, you're, you're the, your career is probably going to go overseas after this. And But it's yeah. like, well, okay, if you can find some money here, yeah, sure, why not? You know, so, you know, Marshall, of course, you know, why not, right? Unless you're going to get drafted. Yeah. Even if you are, like second round, is that going to, you know, if you can – that's not always a guaranteed paycheck. And so, you know, if you get an NIL deal saying, yeah, here, if you come back, we'll, you know, we'll make some money here. Sure, why not? Yeah, um, and then on the women's side, we have to give a standing ovation, round of applause to Zinnere Antoine and Texas State women's basketball for being co-champs of the regular season in the Sun Belt. Um, mm-hmm. They are the two seed going into the tournament. Um, Addison is the one seed. Um, I think all four of these top four, we've talked about it before how the Sun Belt is kind of evenly, it doesn't feel like there's a huge drop off, at, at least in the top like four or five. Um, and sure. I think that's kind of reflected. James one, Texas State two, Southern Miss three, and Troy four. Obviously, Troy is usually a powerhouse here. So that's your top four. Um, I don't think it's going to be easy for Texas State, but they put themselves in a pretty good position here uh, to make a run at it. They play the winner of Louisiana and App State. Um, I have not. I do not know anything about either one of those. But then they get potentially Southern Miss there, and um, I'll go take a look at their schedule but yeah what yeah, do you yeah. think what what do you want to say about a uh, coach z friend of the pod and uh yeah. this team? no that was all that that's awesome like because we we had questions about whether this team could could really be this good um we knew that they brought everybody back but we saw last year they did kind of disappoint um despite having more or less this core the same core last year same core. um and so, you know, we were like, okay, well, how much can they improve, right? Was last year kind of what where they are or are they where they did they disappoint last year, right? Um, and yeah, you come in and all of a sudden you you kind of hit the ground, um, you hit conference running, I'll say. They just kind of start a little bit up and down and then all of a sudden conference play starts and they just go. Um, and I want to say they finish, what was it? 13, 13 and five. Yeah. yeah, 13 and five in conference. Their first conference, even 
the share of the conference title, their first one in 15 years. Um, Coach Z, you know, after just uh, go, first of all, go read Justin Carter's preview on uh, the Sun Belt um, yeah. on TexasBasketball.com because he brings up the last time Tech State had a shot to win the conference was about five, four or five years ago. Um, Tasha Levitt and Taylor Deer were kind of the hinge points of that team. And it looked like after those two guys left, it looked like Texas State was kind of trying to figure out where the direction the team was going. They, you know, they bring in Kennedy Taylor, who starts as a freshman, and it was like, okay, it's here's someone, but they kind of were trying to figure out pieces around her. Of course, Denasia Hood ends up coming in. And so, like, this has been a team that's been in the works, and you see it from, you know, their the fact that they're all six year seniors um, yeah. has been in the works for five, four or five years. Like this isn't just a, a, a flash in the pan. This is something that like coach Z has been kind of building towards. So I know I, this has been, it's been really cool to see them kind of really flourish. Um, you know, I've mentioned Tiana Eaton being a huge player this year uh, after battling injury last year. Um, so I, you know, they, they lost by four to James Madison in the, in the regular season. Um, so they've shown they could, they could be right there with them. Um, I'm gonna try to bring up the bracket here real I, quick. I've got it um Go it. to where they split with UL uh mm-hmm. Louisiana. Um yes. they split with them both the road team winning both of those games, which is interesting. Um they beat App State in the one game that they played App State in. So we'll see UL you assume to be a tougher matchup as the seventh seed. They get through them, they would presumably let's just say they play Southern Miss. Southern Miss, they beat both regular season games, the first being in uh Overtime, 62-52 to 52 in San Marcos, and the second being on the road, winning 69-52. So maybe they have Southern Miss's number. Um, let's look at Georgia Southern real quick. Did they play Georgia Southern? They did not. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, they did. They won 82-70. So, hey, they, they're, they're looking pretty good here. I would assume Troy and James Madison probably to be um, – avoiding them i think yeah. was important they've lost they lost both games to troy and then uh lost the, to james madison by four lane the year like you said so avoiding yeah. them i think this is a great draw yeah no that two seed was perfect for them because yeah now they get to just hope you know hope troy and and james madison kind of beat each other up and then they just got to win a one-off um this is definitely their best shot to that I guess that that Taylor Deer Tasha Levitt team was very fun to watch. I suggest anybody who can find highlights of that team was, I mean Taylor Deer won Player of the Year I think that year, um, and Tasha Levitt was basically like Steph Curry in a Texas State jersey. She was awesome, um, but it was kind of those two and like a lot hinged on those two. This team is a lot more well rounded, right? Last year we kind of were we were kind of worried that it was a lot of Denasia Hood, it was a lot of T- uh, Kennedy Taylor setting teams up, setting people up. Now it's kind of everybody doing a little bit of everything. Ja'Kayla Bowie is playing a huge role. Lauren mm-hmm. Thompson, Taylor Pruitt, right? And so, um, I, yeah, I would say this team's going to be – this team, in my opinion, is their best shot in a long time to make the tournament. So, um, yeah. And and uh, by the way, Tamia Jefferson hasn't even been healthy this season and, like, they've done this, right? Tamia Jefferson was a former big contributor to Houston Christian last year, and she they brought her in and – obviously expected her to probably play that off ball guard role and she hasn't been healthy and they've still been able to, to manage this. So um, yeah, I, I'm very much looking forward to this. I'll be watching probably this whole run from them. Um, you know, hopefully it's a long run. Um, Cause I do think this is set up perfectly. They'll pray. They'll play Friday at seven 30 PM. They'll play. If they win that, they play Sunday at two at 2 p.m. and then if they win that the championship game is on ESPNU at 1 p.m. on a Monday. So Yeah. By the way, I'll continue my rant against the Sun Belt for moving all their tournaments to Pensacola <laughs> when they used to play them in New Orleans. Oh <laughs> so, man. So uh yeah. I, I'm glad I'm glad I'll, I'll just say this. I'm glad I left the beat when they moved that cuz like that was always a guaranteed money trip for me. Was like, oh, I get to go to New Orleans to cover basketball? What? And it was played at New Orleans um, um, Lakefront Listen. Arena. Yeah. And so it's like really, like New Orleans University is really, it's actually a really nice arena um, with like the skyline of New Orleans on the on the court and everything. So I always loved making that trip. Um, so yeah, then they moved to, I, I get off the beat, then like within a year, they moved to Pensacola. So I was like, oh my God, thank, please, thank God. <laughs> um. All right, next Shout out to AM Corpus Christi women's. Um, yeah. I believe 
they have also won a share of the conference title. And their tournament, the Southland tournament, it's weird. They have like a break, a pretty long break, and the, the tournament doesn't start till next week. So let me make sure. Yeah, March 6th. So we have a we have a few few days away. Um and of Corpus Christi still plays, has to play a commerce coming up, but um they beat Commerce by 25 last time they played. I just this Corpus Christi team has won four in a row. I mean, they've bl- they've blown out Commerce and Northwestern State back to back games. Um, I had the standings up. Let me get the Southland standings up. Um, it's, very, it's crazy how many conferences in this country have the word South in them. Just, just right. throwing that out there. <laughs> but a thirteen and four, and then South uh, Southeast Louisiana is also thirteen and four. So they will have to beat Commerce, and um, Southeastern will have to beat. Um, Houston Christian. So I think that was a little premature. I think the men's got it. I don't remember what exactly it was, but anyways, yeah, uh, they have a sh- chance to um, also win the conference. So shout out to yeah. you. Yep. I think uh, I will say, I think Steve Lutz probably won't get coach of the year this year. Cause it's Corey Gibson from Northwestern state. Um, they were like nine and 20 last year. So like, I think he might sneak it away. Um, rightfully so, you know, they're finished second just to Corpus. Um, but regardless, I think he'll, I think uh, we'll see a lot of these guys on the um, first day on the, the conference team. Yeah. I'm looking at it now. 13, yeah. four. Yeah. So the men's side has at least guaranteed a share at the very least of the yep. title. Um, the women's side will have to win to guarantee a share. Uh, but the men's team beat Northwestern State at home, eighty-three to seventy-five, uh, which was obviously the game between two um, twelve and four teams at the top of the conference to kind of work that out, and they got the win. So, shout out Corpus Christi men and women's. Um, I think is if Mashila Murdix is the leader for Player of the Year because I mentioned Gibson probably winning. Murdix won and won another Player of the Week. I know that. Which I think uh, it looks uh, looks like Demarcus Sharp from. Uh, Northwestern State's leading the conference and score. He's almost averaging 19 points a game. Uh, mm-hmm. And when you have Mashila and Murdix on the same team, they probably take yeah. some production away from each other. So, um, oh yeah, he's averaging 21 in conference. Yeah, he might win it. Um, Travian Tennyson's averaging 19. So there's something. Um, but yeah, it looks like I, I have a feeling that this will be like a Northwestern State wins coach of the year, player of the year, and then like. Commerce has or, uh, Corpus has like three players on the first team. <laughs> yeah, first team. Yeah, type thing. All right, let's do bracketology. Let's jump to let's it. Do it. Um, I'm pulling this up for the first time, fresh, because this yep. is, was updated. I think this morning. Mm-hmm, same. So we get to we get to see it, get to see it, get to feel it. Um, okay. on the bubble, let's 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 look at the bubble real quick. Okay. Texas Tech uh, is on the next four out still. Um, hasn't really moved. Texas I was about Tech to, that was probably plays. that was probably due after the TCU loss. Um, yeah. They probably yeah it didn't surprise me that they're still hanging out. Yeah, man, they could have won that game too. They really could have. Really, really, really tough game there. So that's again that's one I think they should have during the broadcast. They were on the first four mm-hmm. out. Then yep. they lost that game next four. Out. I said they were gonna have to go seven and eleven. With that loss, they have Kansas tonight on the road. If they lose <sighs> Kansas and then win the last game, they're not going seven. They're going six and uh, six and twelve. And doesn't can't Kansas technically clinch the Big Twelve? If I'm not mistaken, with Texas probably, losing, probably at this point, yeah, um, maybe. But that's what I'm saying. Kansas is like a ten point favorite right now. Right. Um, right. If Tex if Texas Tech wins that game, they're in the tournament probably. Uh, but a loss, which is more likely going to happen. Um, is going to put them, I think, even farther out of the picture. Um, yeah. It will. They now need a deep conference tournament run. They are the team in most need of a tournament run. Not saying they're, they need to win it, but they need no. to win at least two games, which would be probably beating. I don't have the tournament in front of me. Let's just say they beat a team like Oklahoma State, right? And then let's say they need to beat a team like a Kansas State. Yeah. Like they're gonna need those two wins and then play close game against whoever they play in that third round. I was about to say there, there, there definitely needs to be a one, um, at least an upset, one upset in there. Um, yes, I'm trying to think. Let me see if I can bring up their the bracket to kind of project what they maybe will look like. But um, yeah, it's it, oh, go ahead. Yeah, 
Well, I, no, I was going to say, oh, the only teams I could think are below them, Oklahoma and West Virginia. Is that correct? Do you have the standings up? Yeah. Uh, let me see. Standings right here. Uh, Oklahoma's below them. West Virginia took a half game up. Oh, damn. So, yeah, it's going to be tough. Um, that, Like I said, that TCU loss really, really, really hurt them. Um, so we'll have to see there. Uh, let me see. Here we All go. right. Texas is a two in latest bracketology. Baylor is a two. TCU is a five. AM is an eight. Uh AM Corpus Christi is the 16th seed. Uh, and they're not in the play-in of the 16th, so good for them. We've talked about we've talked before about how this Corpus Christi team is higher rated and just better perceptually and on the court than last year's last year's team i think was in the 250s or 60s in ken palm this year mm-hmm. they're in the low 200s i believe so this if a of corpus christi makes it i think they will avoid the play-in which i've said before i don't think the play-in as a 16 is a bad thing because you can potentially get a win uh hang the banner but <laughs> still you don't have to play in that game so you are in the in the actual tournament so good for okay them so t- looking it. at the looking at the bracket right now so tech is probably is basically locked in to the seven through ten, um, it just kind of depends on yeah. results in within that. So regardless, they either play a mix of. I mean, I guess Oklahoma State and Iowa State could technically flip. Uh, they're six and seven right now, um, but it looks like if I had to pay, place money on it, I would bet Tech playing Oklahoma or West Virginia um, in the first round. And so, and then at that point, it has to be a win. They would get. Let me see. They oh god, then they'd probably get the number one seed right off the. Okay. If if they get the eight, if they get the eight or nine, let's put it this way: if Tech gets the eight or nine, then they have to play uh, obviously the other eight or nine, and then they get the one seed more or less. Yeah. That's how the bracket shakes out. Um, if they get the seven ten, seven through ten seed, then they get the number two. So honestly, as long as they avoid Kansas, I think they have a chance. I think I no, think I, they, I I agree. I agree. I think they can guys. beat Texas or Baylor. Like I think that is a right. viable thing. I don't think they can beat Kansas. I just think right. Kansas is too good. Has no, too I, much I agree. power. So, um, let me see. Texas has at least so Texas has TCU and Kansas coming up, like you said. And then Baylor has Iowa State. So I mean, honestly, so ba- so with Baylor beating Texas, Baylor has a shot at the number two. And Texas, I think if Texas splits. They hold the. I don't know if they have the, uh, not head to head, but I think they yeah, still hold know. a tiebreaker, yeah. um, well, of we'll, some kind. We'll look at it. We'll we'll preview the conference next year. But yeah, you're right. I in Texas Tech gonna they're gonna have a tough road here. They're gonna have to get right. through a lower a lower seed, and then they're gonna have to beat one of Texas, Baylor, Kansas, and yeah, second round, and that's gonna be their plan to the tournament. Mm-hmm. If not, yeah, go play in the NIT and go win it. I was about to say, yeah, you're just gonna get an invite to that. Go win the NIT. But any all right, anything else? I ran through the other ones here uh, as far as yeah. bracketology goes. Well, what did I say? Baylor and Texas, both two seeds. TCU is a five seed, so they've bumped up a, li- a bit after the Texas Tech win. Uh, we were talking about them. We were concerned about TCU for a bit, but they're bumped up to a, to a five. Um, A&M, uh, they were a eight seed. Was I right about that? Yes, eight seed. Um, they still have Houston as the one, and then A&M – playing illinois as the eight nine the winner would play yeah. houston so again houston versus AM, i would sign up for that any day of the week i would love that matchup uh so please give that to us and then so uh, uh, i think four. so the this one's interesting so i'm looking at just for some different difference uh cbs has the only difference is they still have texas as a two um they still have baylor as a let's see they have baylor as a three the only difference is they have tcu as a six um which they would get a play in in that scenario um uh, an 11 play in, yeah, and then the matchup that I'm actually really curious about that they so they have AM as a seven and they have them drawing FAU. I think that's would be a nightmare for AM. That's really interesting. That'd be a nightmare for AM because FAU opinion. is pr- better than more than half of the SEC. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say that'd be a nightmare draw if AM gets a seven and their like, 10 is. Honestly, if their 10 is FAU or North Texas, because of the way North Texas plays, that's like a nightmare draw. Like if you get the winner of Conference USA out of one of those two teams, you're like, are you kidding me? Like I would, I think personally, and I 
I don't think metrics agree with this. Maybe but it's not far off, but like, I think FAU is better than Auburn. I think FAU is better than. I mean, Vanderbilt's playing well, but I mean, I'm still taking right. him over Florida, Vanderbilt. Like mm-hmm. Missouri would be probably better. They're probably better than Missouri. Like I don't know where FAU finishes in the SEC, but it's not very low. Like I'm, yeah. they're probably, in my opinion. Well, look. Okay, so Ken Palm, has, yeah, FA, Ken Palm has FAU 31 and Auburn's 29. So like yeah. you're not far off. That's what I'm saying. Like you could Arkansas, if Arkansas plays, you know, as well as it can, is better than right. FAU. But Arkansas has right. been very consistent. Uh, you could probably say the same about Mississippi State. But so it's like, and we've talked about AM's schedule before. It's not like AM has gone through murderer's row this year. SEC has been very down. They yep. um they played Tennessee once, and I think they haven't yeah, they haven't even played Alabama yet, the last game of the season, AM. Uh they just lost to Mississippi State on the road, like they lost Arkansas on the road, they lost Kentucky on the road. This schedule, their schedule has not been very difficult in conference. All right. We've we've admitted that. I'm not taking sure. anything away from them because they beat Tennessee, they've beaten Arkansas at all these home wins. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying you go to a tournament situation where you have to play FAU as like a seven ten or an eight nine. Or even and... even in ESPN, they have them as a have them going against Illinois. <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying. It's right. Just, like they're, that, not... they're gonna they're like that's uh, it's gonna be a tough draw for them because they're again, their non conference did them no favors. And so, like, they did great in the SEC, and full credit to them, but their non-conference did them no favors to where it's like, okay, yeah, you're, you're second in the SEC, you're going to be at eight. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. You know, Let's see. Arkansas is an eight. I'm trying to see how many tournament teams they've they've played and beaten this year. I mean, Arkansas, Auburn will make it. Like, Arkansas and Auburn are both, like, on the nine line, mm-hmm. eight, nine line. Um I think Missouri, I don't know if I control F Missouri. Does Missouri's in there? I don't, yeah, they are. That's an eight. It's just like the whole SEC is an eight seed, basically. I was about to say, (laughs) they just put the whole SEC as an eight. And so it's like, okay, cool. Well, we'll we'll see. We'll see what AM can do um, at that level. I don't know. It's just a, it's an interesting situation here because whoever they draw against, you're not going to feel great. Right. But at the same time, you're like, hey, you know, maybe. Yeah, they they play tough. They got good guards. You know, it's a it's a well coached team. Yep. So they're just I will not feel confident either way, regardless of who AM is matched up against. Like I just I won't. So I think I think there's a chance AM loses tonight against Ole Miss at, on the road. Like I wouldn't be surprised if AM dropped its last three games. Mississippi State already lost, Ole Miss on the road, Alabama at home. I'm just saying, like, it feels like the Cinderella run was that. 13 and two starting conference play. Mm-hmm. And now we might see them a little start to slow down a little bit. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we come back on this and they're a sweet 16 team uh, with yeah, no we'll problems, see. but it's a, it, I'm, I'm a little worried about them coming back down to earth. Um, Baylor and Texas has two seeds. I think that's fair. I don't think Baylor should be any lower than a two seed right now. Right. I think Baylor is no, 100%. a hundred percent um, good team, even though Keontae George was out last night. So they were having to, to battle that and they still took care of business on the road against mm-hmm. Oklahoma State. I thought they were very, very good in that game. Um, obviously beat Texas at home, have Iowa State up at home next. If they beat Iowa State at home and then 12 and 6 and 23 and 8, uh, there's no way they're lower than a two seed. Um yeah. to me, same goes with Texas. If they can split TCU and Kansas in that 12 and 6 in the Big 12, no lower than a two seed there. Um, who else? TCU as a five. We talked about them. Quite a bit. We were worried about them. They had lost like what six to seven or somewhere around along mm-hmm. that line. Uh, beat Tech. They have Texas up next um, and Oklahoma. I don't know. I think Mike Miles is just a revelation. He's so good. Oh, he just changes so much. It, just, it's a, it, 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 it is a different team yeah. uh, with him. So I think they should be a five. Um, Depending on the conference tournament, probably, but yep. I think they probably should be five. Who does Bracketology have them up against right now? Okay, so Bradley. they have them. CBS has them against yeah. with the play versus the play in six eleven, and then ESPN has them against Bradley um, as a five twelve. TCU Xavier in the second round would be really interesting. Like if we look at a potential four seeds, they could play sure. UConn. Xavier. UConn, I was about to say, yeah. Did they just put the whole Big East as four seeds now? Is that <laughs> right? Uh, Virginia four seed. They could beat all these four seeds. Oh, 100%. Just... TC... Look, I'm telling you right now. So I'm looking at CBS's bracket. Ooh, TCU could come out of this bracket. Like, like this side of the CBS's? bracket. 
CBS. So okay, the, the one seed would be the one seed's Alabama. Tough, obviously. Tough, but they've sure. done. They've. I feel like they can beat Alabama. Alabama um, has, has dipped a bit. Yes. Yeah. In their play. Um. The the two would be where's the two? Two's Kansas State. Three's UConn. Four Indiana. Five St. Mary's. I think TCU can come out of that. That's a pretty easy region. If Kansas yeah. State, Kansas State's a two, in the, in in the CBS bracket. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to think. Yeah. In the ESPN bracket, I still. I mean, let me see. I still and think Kansas yeah, State's like, a two as well. Yeah. The no the offense ESPN to Kansas bracket, State, get, but sorry, whoever gets whatever whoever gets Kansas State as a two seed in their region, I think you have to feel pretty good about yourself. Yeah, I, maybe that's wrong. That. Maybe that's unfair to them because they're great. They're really, really good. Like I don't know, TCU, Kansas State, and Baylor are all going to be two seeds somehow. So the whole Big Twelve is going to be a two seed. The whole Big East is going to be a four seed, and the whole SDC is going to be an eight seed. Eight seed. <laughs> oh. And, then and uh, be the one. that's the only that's the only difference. Alabama is going to be the one seed. Yeah, and Alabama is going to be the one, the one SEC team. Yeah. Um. But again, I'm looking at like the SEC region right now. Um, or I'm sorry, not SEC region. This one region on ESPN right now, it doesn't have a Texas team in it, but like Kansas State two, Tennessee three, UConn four, Miami five, and Purdue as your one. Yeah. That is the wonkiest region <clears throat> I can think of because I don't trust any of those five teams. Creighton right. is the six. I don't trust them either. I've watched a lot of Creighton this year. I like that's one of those things. Michigan State and FAU are the seven ten. I might pick one of them to come out of the the region. Like if that was the region, so it's a it's a lot of matchups as we know. Um, I think if Texas, like for instance, Texas in this uh, Joel Lenardi one has Duke as the seven seed and has Marquette as the three seed in it. Like Oof. that's a oh pretty- my goodness, Shaka versus oh, Shaka versus <laughs> Texas again. Oof. Like I'm just saying, it's a lot of it's going to be matchup based here. Yeah, yeah. Um. And I, I just, I don't know. I don't know who no, I trust. I need, I, I need, I need, I need NCAA to fix that. I need that. I need that matchup fixed. I need that second weekend we Texas market. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I especially need if they play that. the three sixteen, you have a full a four day build up to it too. So you know what mm-hmm. I mean. I need, I need, I need that to be fixed. I need the, I need the, the, the call. I need the call to be made. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Um, Let's think. Uh, obviously, a team like North Texas is going to have to win the tournament. Uh, mm-hmm. If you go through it, A&M Corpus Christi is going to have to win their tournament. I mean, all the automatic qualifiers we've talked about all year um, are going to have to win their tournament. That's just how, yep. how basketball works. But the work. only non-power conference is Houston, and they're in regardless. So, Yes. Um, same thing. Let's see. Let's check in on the WAC real quick. Uh, again, we'll do a full conference tournament uh, mm-hmm. rundown. Uh, on uh, Friday, previewing everything, so we'll get all those out. Um, or maybe split it Friday, Tuesday, probably Friday, Tuesday, split it up. But um, yeah, that'll be interesting to see. All right, we can wrap up now on some on the women's side. We can do quick bracketology since there's only two teams. I was about to say there's only two teams that are going to be involved. At least, uh, uh, obviously, if Texas State or you know somebody else wins the conference, that's fine. But Texas State uh, and Corpus Christi on the women's side are the two that we have to pray, yeah, win their tournament and make it in. So that way we have more than two teams to talk about. Otherwise, it's looking it's looking shaky. <laughs> yeah, and one of the two is Baylor, who's an eight seed right now, and Texas, who just played a game with seven players, and Sonia Morris is still doubtful in the short yeah. term. I was about to say Baylor as an eight is nasty because they are like looking really good right now. <laughs> it's nasty, but. It's also nasty that they are an eight seed that they have to play a one seed in the second round, and that one seed in this specific draw is South Carolina. <laughs> so, <gasps> so there it goes. Ooh. It's a great, not, it's a great eight seed. You're right. I'm not. I'm not it's that. Uh, it's that Tiger meme is not built for this. <laughs> no. when like they, when they play South like, Carolina, like if they can play um, Stanford or Utah, at least they'd have a shot. I was about to say, like, there's there's one team that they do not have a shot against, and it's South no, Carolina. No, no and it's not even like, it's not even like, yes, they're not on paper, they're not good enough, but like matchup wise, they are like the is the worst matchup they could possibly get. The worst matchup. There's no one that guards Aaliyah Boston. <laughs> like, absolutely or no one. Or Cardoso. Or um, yeah, yeah, nobody in that. So, anyways, but let's just hope 
So yeah. Baylor, uh, we have to include this in here because Baylor did just beat Texas 63 to yes. 54 on Sunday. Very good. Um, very impressive win in Austin. Very impressive win. We Austin? talked about Baylor's um it was in uh, it was in Austin, yes. It was yeah, in Austin. It was not, okay. Um we've talked about Baylor not having, you know, Khadija Fay and Drayon Edwards for, throughout the year. Cool, but they have managed without them to piece mm-hmm. it together and put together a very respectable season. Texas entered the game with seven players, seven scholarship Probably players at Baylor. Sonia Morris has been, I believe she's missed six straight games now. They thought she was going to be day-to-day. Uh, Schaefer comes in after the game and says, obviously, she's not day-to-day. She's just hurt. We don't know how long <laughs> she's going to be hurt. We don't know how when she's coming back, all this stuff. Mm. So let's hope, let's hope that in the next two weeks she can heal up and, you know, do some of the Mr. Miyagi stuff on her legs, get her <laughs> back. Because that's 12, 13 points per game right there. Aaliyah Moore has been out for a long time, ACL injury. Mm-hmm. Uh, the freshman whose name I cannot pronounce, and I'm sorry, I don't want to butcher it. I'm not going to try. I She she was out. Um, Kendall Hunter is still not with the team, or at least not playing. Deanna Gaston got injured during the game, came back limping on one leg because they didn't have bodies to put in to replace her. <laughs> yeah. um, and they lost, Fine. and Baylor won on the road. It's a good win for Baylor. Texas is obviously a very capable team still. It's not like they haven't been winning games. Sure. Uh, but there's a very, very limited ceiling on this team without the players that I mentioned, especially Sonia Morris. With all that being said, Texas is, I believe, a four seed in the latest bracketology. Um, and I think that's pretty reasonable. I think that's pretty good. If you're Texas, I don't think I can complain with a four seed at the, after the year that I've had. No, I, I, I wouldn't be able. I couldn't complain. Um, like you said, they're limping to the finish line. And so I think they're just kind of con- worry about getting healthy. And this team is good enough to where literally like barring like, okay, you get thrown in the same, again, it's in the same region of South Carolina. Like you're confident wherever you land, I think, as long as you get healthy. Yeah. Um, and I think they are, I mean, I really think they're that caliber of team, right? If they get it again, barring some run in early run in with South Carolina, I don't care where this team gets dropped. I'm going to think they have a swinging they have a swinging chance, right? It's one, it's Vic Schaefer in March, right? Mm-hmm. We've seen how he can just like make black magic happen. <laughs> and uh and this team is just talented, a lot more talented than in recent years, but they have to be healthy and all these players have to be ready to go because that's kind of been the key is that when they've been at their best, they've been deeper, they've been more versatile scoring wise, defensively they've still been solid. And so yeah, they need Obviously, Rory Harmon's the key to that, but yeah. even though she's healthy and playing really well right now, she needs help. <laughs> she needs help, and she needs uh, people to be able to have her sit down some minutes, right? The backcourt needs to be a little bit healthier, and then the inside, yeah, the inside game needs to be there. Um, yeah. So we'll see, but yeah, this has been a very, very, very rough finish to the year. Yeah, a lot of Taylor Jones in that Baylor game, and Baylor just kind of spread them out. And I was about to say, Taylor made... Jones has also been somebody who's battled injury this year, and they're yeah. just like, we need you to play the whole game, basically. <laughs> well, heck, Rory Harmon was hurt for the first, you know, few weeks of the year. They they yeah. lost some games that maybe they wouldn't have lost with, with her. So it's like, all that being said, they get a four seed out of this. I'm ecstatic. Five seed even, I'm, I'm happy. Sure, so sure. Uh, get one of those two, because a four seed, you're hosting. We have to remember, mm-hmm. on the women's side, if you are a top four seed, you get to host. That is a very, and potentially very they get to host potentially if they get thrown in Austin because one of the regionals will be in Austin. One of the, oh. the the early rounds will be in Austin. So like, if that falls their way, yeah, you get to host a game in the Moody Center. Yeah, so it's gonna be, um, it'll be interesting if they can just get to the Sweet Sixteen. I think it's a very success, successful year considering everything that's happened. All right, last thing here, Reagan Peebley stepping down at TCU. I'll let you take it yeah. uh, for for a bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we it's not surprising. Um, obviously, she'll finish out the year. Um, Stephen Johnson at the Fort Worth Star Telegram broke news that she announced she would be stepping down at TCU. Um, it isn't surprising when you've seen the past couple of years. It's just been a, a, a struggle. Um, the unfair part to all this, what we mentioned with the COVID year kind of taking away her best team. Um, they, that She had three straight years of 20 wins heading into that year. That was, I think they finished second behind Baylor um, in the conference, and they would have easily made the tournament um, probably for the first time, and I can't remember how long. Um, back-to-back WNIT semifinal appearances the years before that. And, yeah, the program was just on a trajectory, and then all of a sudden, boom. I just literally just nuked it, and COVID yeah. 
put an end to it. She had to rebuild on the fly, and this just been a very, very bad three years now. Um, so yeah, they're seven and twenty right now, one and fifteen in the Big Twelve, and so she, um, she'll luckily get her the they have an away game. I forgot against who. And I think they host Kansas, so she'll get her last game at home on the last game of the season. So um, it'll be Senior Day. It'll be her last game. So you know it's gonna be a big. A big day there. Um, I'm really curious to see what happens next with her, right? She's She is a good coach. Obviously, situations kind of ruin things for her. Um, does she take an assistant gig somewhere? Does she get another gig somewhere else? You know, does she pull a Karen Aston, right? Does she go down to mid-major and kind of uh, build build back? You know what I'm thinking? That... What's up? You know what I'm thinking here? It's I'm, I mean, the job's trip. not open. I'm take not saying I'm trip, trip over the road. I'm not. I'm not saying the job's open, so I'm, I would never, you know, advocate outright for it. I'm just saying if something did trip, happen, trip across the the Metroplex, take a little trip north, take a little trip north to the northern the northern part of Texas. That's what a little, I'll little say. northern 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 part of Texas. Huh? Northern part of Texas. Give her a shot over there. Uh, Listen, I think she could do some kick ass stuff there. I'll put it that way. Um, but I mean, and, and so I don't know. I don't know what um, does she go into broadcasting? Right? She's a, she's the wings uh, uh, color person. So like, does she go into broadcasting full time? I don't know. Um, typically, these coaches take a year off, regardless. And so I think that's what what she'll do. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think she she took TCU to kind of some new heights, and at the end, she was kind of a victim of her own you know, success. So uh, so yeah, we'll see. Um, you know, TCU is a pretty good job. It's a good location, right? DFW. Uh, fertile recruiting grounds so uh good facilities there too so i'll probably i'll, I'll try to put together a piece of some names but um yeah i'm uh, reagan people was always great to me whenever i was able to contact her um she has no enemies in the building right it was kind of like i mentioned there's a reason why it was a stepping down as opposed to a yeah. firing um so so yeah um you know unfortunate but you know it is it's how the business goes yep all right, that's all we have for y'all today. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Um, good luck to Texas State out there. We'll be monitoring, um, see how they do. Uh, we'll be back Friday with more previews. I think, I don't know exactly how we're going to do it, but maybe we'll split it up Friday and Saturday, split up all the tournaments because there's so many damn tournaments at this point we have to cover. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll get back on Friday. Uh, it's March. It's March. It's here. It. Uh, we'll be here throughout the month. We are. This is this is the sprint. It's this is the yeah. when you're running the 400, and you come around the last one, and they're they're yelling kick. You know, kick, start kicking, and I'm like, I could never kick. I was, I was dead. But anyways, uh, that's where we're at. So let's finish strong, and uh, we'll hope you know Texas women and Baylor women and all those teams can do the same as well. But yeah, thank y'all for joining us. You can follow us on Twitter at Matthew underscore and at Ishmael R Johnson, and we will talk to y'all again.